Hello AP Physics students, this is Dr. Brinzi here. This is lesson 1.3.2, and the topic of this lesson is position and velocity vectors, excuse me. And I'll be expecting that you take notes on this, uh, just like we would take notes in class. So go ahead and take out your notes, and when you are ready to continue with your notes, go ahead and continue the video. But if you are ready, let's go ahead and make some progress here. So <clears throat> we're going to be dealing with um, kinematics in two dimensions. In other words, we're going to study motion now that instead of just back and forth, motion now has back and forth and up and down. So let's first think about what position is in two dimensions. So let's think of a common situation we have in, you know, especially if you go to a football game, and that is of a punter punting a ball away. So I have my favorite Minnesota Golden Gopher here. He's ready to punt the ball away and give Minnesota some excellent, um, some excellent field position so that they can go on defense and go on to win the game. But let's say that this is our punter right here, and we know from personal experience, if you've studied enough uh, things that travel in the air, it could be uh, punting a ball or it could be hitting a fly ball up in the air, that the general shape that these that these items make is a parabola. Okay, so what happens is that it starts off really fast here and then it kind of slows down when it gets here and then it speeds up uh, when it finally gets down here. Anywhere along this path that the football takes, we can create a position vector. So let's say that the football is right here at, that mo at a particular moment we can create a vector that goes from the origin of our two of our Cartesian graph X and Y from the origin to that particular position where the football is at that moment and we have uh, we have plenty of expertise in breaking down these in, these vectors into their I hat and J hat components we've already practiced that so you can break down this position vector into its i hat and its j hat components. So you can say that this vector is two i hats, which is right here, and then we could go up four j hats to get to this position vector. Right? So that's the first important thing to know when you are dealing with position vectors, is that you can break them down into horizontal x, and vertical Y components, or horizontal I hat, vertical J hat components. Now, sometime later along this path, the football will travel along this path and might end up like somewhere over here. We could draw another position vector, another R vector that goes from the origin to this new position at a later time. So let's call this one R2 since it is later in time than R1. And we again could split this into its I hat, horizontal, and J hat components. And let's say that this position vector is 7 I hat plus 5 J hat. Um, I should probably attach meters to this, but I haven't done that yet. But just maybe think of this as meters. We'll just be consistent in that, in that way. Um, okay, so what we can do now is we can think of a change in position over time. So let's ask ourselves, okay, just like you can take a change in position when you're doing back and forth motion, you can also take a change in position from here to here. Now the difference is, is that now our change, instead of being a scalar number with positive or negative number, is going to be a vector. So our change in position, delta R equals R2 minus R1. And if I wanted to show this graphically, I better turn this R1 around. 
because that R1 is negative. Okay, so you can see that my change of position vector goes from here, goes negative R1, and then plus R2, and ends up right here. So this is indeed R, R2 minus R1. Oops, actually I should back up here. Let's go ahead and, whoops, I'm going forward and step back. Let's go ahead and calculate what this delta R is. So I have delta R equals, now I have to put my R2 in there, so my R2 is 7 I hat plus 5J hat minus my R1 is 2I hat plus 4J hat. Okay. Now when I do vector subtraction, let's make sure that I'm only adding or subtracting I hats with each other. And let's make sure I'm only subtracting J hats from each other. Okay. So I have 7I hat minus 2I hat. That's going to leave me with 5I hat. And then my 5J hat minus 4J hat. That gives me plus 1J hat. Okay. So we could split this vector up into 5I hats and 1J hat. Okay, now let's say that I want to know the total distance that the ball traveled from here to here. Now, I'm not talking about the path. I'm just talking about the magnitude of the distance, like the straight distance from where the ball was here to where the ball is here. If I want to do that, then all I need to do is I just need to take the magnitude of this change in position vector from there to there. Well, how do we do that? Well, we can do that by using the Pythagorean theorem. Let's remember that this was, whoops, gotta back up. All right, get in the drawing mode here. Let's remember that this was five I hats. And let's remember this was one J hat. Okay. So now I can just use the Pythagorean theorem and get my magnitude of delta R. That's just equal to 5 squared plus 1 squared. And then I have to take the square root of all that, right? Just like C squared, this squared equals A squared plus B squared. I'd have to take then the square root of this entire thing to get just the magnitude of the hypotenuse here. Okay, so 5 squared plus 1 squared, that ends up being 25 plus 1, which is 26. So, oops, I almost put 62. So my distance from here to here is a total of square root of 26. Whatever units I had, I decided earlier we we're going to call these meters. All right, so that would be how I would calculate distance directly from this point over to that point right there. Okay. Another problem we might encounter is talking about average velocity. You might remember in two or in back and forth motion in one dimension that our change in our average velocity. was equal to the change in displacement divided by the change in time. Okay, with vectors, it works very similarly. I'm gonna back out of this. And, oops, let's exit that. All right, I can say that my average velocity vector is equal to the change in the position vector divided by the change in time. Now because this is a vector I'm in, and I'm dividing it by a scalar, the result is now going to be a vector. So this is actually going to have a magnitude and it's going to be pointing in a certain direction. Now when I divide or add, or excuse me, divide or multiply scalars, 
it doesn't change the direction of this vector. It just makes it either larger or smaller. So, oops, I, oops, uh, yeah, 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 let's back that up. Okay, so my point is, is that my average velocity vector, which is this white vector, is going to point in the same direction as this change in position vector. So let's figure out what this average velocity vector is. Let's say that the ball takes three seconds to get from here over to here. So my delta t equals three. So let's say that delta t equals three. My r, my change in position vector, if you remember earlier, was five i hat plus j hat. So I'm dividing this entire vector by 3. Now when you divide this by 3, that's like saying 1 over 3 times 5i hat plus j hat. And now I have to use the distributive property. So this would be 5 thirds i hat plus 1 third j hat. That was probably a bad place for me to write that. Let me rewrite it down here. 5 thirds i hat plus 1 third j hat. Okay? And that would be my average velocity vector. V average. Okay? It would probably be in meters per second. Actually, it would be in meters per second. Okay, so now we know how to calculate average velocity. What about instantaneous velocity? We learned about that. We learned that instantaneous velocity was the, <coughs> excuse me, the instantaneous velocity was like the velocity along a tangent line. Well, it's very similar in two dimensions. It's just that, <coughs> so imagine that if this if this ball somewhere along its trajectory, anywhere along its trajectory, let's say right here at this point, if it could continue forever without changing its path, it would be pointing in this direction right here. Okay. But it's going to continue along this path. So sometime later, its instantaneous velocity is going to actually be tangential to this point, which is along the horizontal direction. So when you punt a ball, at the very apex of the punt, the very top of the punt, you only have a velocity component in the, the i-hat direction. There's no velocity in the up and down or j-hat direction. And then gravity decides to start bringing the ball back down, and at some other point, we get a very large velocity, instantaneous velocity vector going down, okay? And so our punt returner has to handle a ball that's coming at him at a pretty large speed. Well, what speed is that? Well, we could figure out the ball speed if we knew this if we knew the i hat and j hat components of this velocity vector. Okay, that's going to be a time for another lesson. But if I told you what the i hat and j hat components of this vector were, you could calculate the ball speed at that position by taking the magnitude of that vector. Okay. So let's say, for example, that right here, oops, let me back that up. Whoa. All right, and let me get some, let me get some white going on here. All right, so let's say that at this, at this moment in time, our velocity vector is something like, um, well, let's keep it at 3 i hat, or let's put it at 3 i hat, minus, let's say, 6 j hat. Okay? So, if I wanted to figure out what the ball speed is, I would calculate the magnitude of this vector right here. And the way I do that is I use the Pythagorean theorem. Right? This is our negative 6 j hat. 
That doesn't look like a very good negative six, but let's make it better. Negative six J hat. This would be my three I hat. And now I just have to use Pythagorean theorem and my average, my ball speed equals square root of three squared plus six squared. That's nine plus 36. That's 45, so that's root 45. Um, and if I want to reduce this to simpler terms, that is 3 root 5. And that would be in meters per second. Okay. Okay, so I think root 5 is like 2.3. So 3 times 2.3, that's about 6.9, 7.0 meters per second. All right, so that's how fast the ball would be traveling at this particular position right there. Okay, that's all I have for this this lesson, 1.3.2. We're going to be practicing this when you come back class on Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. All right, look forward to seeing you then, everybody. Have a good night. Bye.